Hi guys, it's Statmat here. Now I thought I'd post up a video today with something that I think some of you may well find very interesting. Now obviously you can see my trusty bread bin and my 1701 monitor here. So obviously it involves real hardware again today. Now the thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit today was a new toy that I've picked up. And it is this device here. It is the Teensy ROM, which has been designed by Travis Smith, aka Sensorium, and it's a marvellous little device. Obviously it has a Teensy at its heart, as you can see there, and that's what powers it. But obviously uh, Travis has built a custom PCB to put all extra little things into there as well, and make it, most importantly, a working cartridge for our real Commodore 64 hardware. Now, the reason I'm posting this today is not only is it an awesome device, but I've actually been collaborating a little bit with Travis over the last sort of couple of weeks or so on a particularly new feature uh, that I think you guys will find interesting. Now obviously you know about my affiliation with OneLo64, I've spoken about the obviously my desire to create something that was easy to use and quick uh, and obviously gave us more of a console like experience when we could use, which we could use with sort of friends and family, that type of situation, okay? So what we've actually been working on is something that involves NFC cards. NFC for the uninitiated is near field communication cards. So they're the type of cards that you actually use when you're accessing buildings, for example, security systems and so on, okay? Now, the particular uh, cards that we're using actually have mini EEPROMs built into them, which means that small amounts of data can be written to them, okay? So basically, what we've, just, we've done and managed to achieve, very similar, for those who are probably watching the video and thinking, similar to the TAP2 project that's been happening under MISTA recently, some great work there by devs like Wizzo, etc., uh, creating something that allowed people to launch games by using physical tokens, i.e. These, these tags, okay? Now essentially, let's flick on the Commodore 64 here, and we'll be presented, hopefully, in a second, with uh, the, obviously, Teensy ROM uh, menu. Uh, apologies for somewhat the flick. I have got the kind of, uh, the, the camera set up so that it probably doesn't avoid, uh, or avoids some of the flicker, but obviously there's a little bit of scan lines there, the beauty of recording, obviously, what, uh, traditional CRT monitors. But, important thing here is, we've actually got another thing over here. Now, this little thing here is actually a case which has been designed to accept the cards, which we'll come on to in a second. But most importantly, it's got a mini NFC reader inside, and we're able to obviously connect that via USB over to the Teensy ROM. And the clever bit is, Travis has very kindly written the software, actually changed the firmware for the device, so that it can actually interact with said reader and actually read data from the cards that we've the data that we've programmed to the cards. Now, if we have a little look at some of the cards that have been produced here, you can see, for example, here that we've got uh, a, just a paper uh, label stuck onto a, a card. So I've obviously printed them out and cut them out. And we'll come on to the cutting process and so on in a minute. But basically, this is a template that uh, I put together uh, and shared with the community because I wanted something that had, obviously, the Commodore 64 theme there at the top. But they're looking like, basically, Hue cards. So if anybody's come across those uh, for the PC Engine, then obviously that's something that they're sort of trying to look like because obviously what we're going to be doing is plugging them in. Now also we've got the ability to use vinyls, so sticker, sticker vinyls. And as you can see here, this is an example of a holographic sticker vinyl, which again works in standard uh, inkjet printers and laser printers if you've got them. Uh, and once again gives you that sort of holographic effect, which I think is pretty cool, I'm sure you'll agree. So basically all we have to do is take this place it into the reader and hopefully we should see some magic happen. So let's pop it in over here. Now it has to go very quickly so I'm going to put it there so you can see it's been inserted but I have to come up to the screen and show you that look we have Space Pilot and look it's sat here. Let's uh, put that back in properly here so the idea is it slots in like that and you can still see the label you can't see the top of it but it gives the impression obviously of a cartridge of some sort being plugged in and again what we love about this is it's the physicality of it so we're trying to reintroduce something to the retro sort of um, enjoyment and, and, and sort of gaming that we we obviously love and enjoy but obviously having something that's physical kind of reminds us and harks back to the physical media of old so again we've got a selection here of different cards that i've pre-programmed uh, and we'll go over some things here. These are actually some labels that I've printed up. They're not stuck to a card yet, you see. But obviously that just shows you, gives you a sense of how easy it is to kind of sort of produce these things. Um, they're not very expensive. You can buy them on Amazon and so on. 
sheets of them, A4 sheets that you can print onto. And I just use one of these simple little cutters to kind of get them nicely cut out with straight edges and so on. Um, but essentially, as we can see here, we've got some, some blank cards. So what we need to do really um, is probably go back up to the menu and show you also one of the, the really interesting features. Now, I talked about some data that we write to these cards, okay? So basically, what's written to these cards is not the game itself, because they can't store that. So basically, we're using a series of cards um, that are called the NTAG 21X series. Now, there are three types of cards in that series. And I say cards, I'm holding a card here, but they're actually available as all sorts of tags, including stickers, believe it or not. So little circular stickers, which still contain the chips inside. Now, again, for the uninitiated, NFC works on the principle of a magnetic induction field. So basically, it's providing somewhat some power to a chip that's embedded in whatever the, the actual tag or token is. Uh, that allows it to then operate as a chip and interact with the reader. So basically, when you buy these, they're obviously blank. They have a, a, only a few hundred bytes available. Now, there's three different cards in this range, and we recommend the middle ones, which is the NTAG 215, 215. Um, that actually allows around 500 bytes of user storage so that we can write to the EEPROM. And the data that we write to the EEPROM is just the path of the, the game file, the CRT, one load CRT file, on the SD card and then it knows to load it. So again, the game data is not on the device, but it's a way of identifying uniquely a particular game by the, the obviously the unique path to the file that exists and lives on the SD card. Now obviously we can see Space Pilot's away doing its thing here. So what we'll do is we'll reset the Teensy. Little uh, button on the, on the right hand side, on the right hand corner here. So we just reset that. Takes us back to the menu, as one would expect. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just browse in and actually find a new game that I haven't yet got on or on one of the cards. So if we go down to one load 64, I've got several version folders here. Um, I've got uh, so for testing purposes. Let's go to the latest. Now, I haven't uh, actually got 1942 here yet. So for example, I'd like to do that. Now, how Travis has written this is basically once you go into the menu, as you, one would expect, there you can actually use the left arrow button at the top left hand corner of your keyboard. And what that will do is it will pop up with a message and say, OK, present a tag or card to the reader, and it will actually write the path that we can see here, SD one load version, uh, one load 64 version 501942musicv1.crt. So what we want it to do is actually write that to the card. So let's present up the blank card to the reader. In it goes. And then we're going to just click a key, and it should tell us that it's actually written it, and there it is. So it also launches it for us, just to be absolutely certain we've actually, it's worked, just as an indicator that it's worked. So if we go back to the Teensy again, and actually reset, because what we want to do is test that that's actually gonna work for us now. Um, so we have to take away the card, it has actually worked for us. I have to take away the card, as otherwise it'll read it. So let's take away the card, reset, we'll take us to the menu, okay, all good. And what we'll do, is we'll take this blank card, look, electricery involved, Let's pop that in and see what happens. Oh look, it started 1942. So it's as easy as that, guys. You take some blank cards and you actually write them with the data from using the whole system itself. You, it is possible to write that same data to the device using um, actually your mobile phone. So there's some apps on the mobile phones that will allow you to actually write that data instead, um, which is good um, and it's pretty convenient, but obviously it's no, it's, can never be as convenient as actually using the device itself. Um, so again, you know, I obviously have a selection just to prove I'm not actually making all this up. Look, there's International Karate. Let's see what happens when we put that on. Oh look, it's International Karate. We go in, International Karate. Take the card away. Doesn't actually do anything when we take the card away because we want to keep the game running. Just get yourself ready, obviously. And you don't have to reboot or anything. You can actually just present the card. So here's Toy Bazaar. Let's put that on the reader and boom, it recognises a new card there and loads up Toy Bazaar. And let's take another one, just as another last little thing, let's do Stunt Car Racer again. We can see that holographic effect here. Pop the card in, like so, and look, we have Stunt Car Racer. So yes, it's a really, really convenient system uh, that I think that you guys should hopefully enjoy. We definitely know that uh, you know something we wanted to do was have something that was sort of uh, complementary to one load on real hardware, which I think you guys will agree is the case. Um, the cards we talked about, they're cheap, they're available online, you can buy them on Amazon, they're only a few pence 
for those of us in the UK, a few pennies or a few cents if you're in the US uh, per card. Um, and here's some of the actual uh, sticker, uh, vinyl stickers that I've bought. So obviously we've looked at the, of the holographic ones. Again, A4 sized, not very expensive, again available on Amazon. Uh, and also you can buy them in obviously just white, so plain white, uh, which will give you obviously just that more clean look, but you won't of course have the holographic effect. So yeah, guys, I mean, that's essentially why I wanted to post the video today to show you up what we've got. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this video. Um, please, as always, uh, to show your appreciation, please like and subscribe. Uh, it is really appreciated. I know a few people have said to me something along the lines of, oh, well, why would I want to just subscribe? Well, to be fair, um, what we like to do is provide something for some sort of free and fun for the community to enjoy and a way of actually expressing your gratitude. Uh, and I know you got a lot of you guys have done it. I've, I'm very thankful for all of those that you guys have already subscribed. Um, but yeah, it's just a little way of showing and, uh, your appreciation back to um, us as ourselves to be doing this. I know we do this for fun, uh, but we honestly do it also uh, just to, we also love to hear back that feedback. And please do post any comments or questions you have in the, uh, the uh, section below. Uh, obviously, I'll add uh, a bunch of links that relate to uh, where to sort of obtain these different things. This this case, for example, was designed by a great guy called Bedroom Ninja, uh, and it was actually very kindly printed for me. I don't have a 3D printer, although I'm very seriously considering buying one. Um, it was printed by uh, the Grumpy Old Gamer, who's also based in the UK, as, as obviously clearly you can tell I am as well from my accent. Uh, so yeah, cool stuff. It has look, there's some information on Travis's uh, GitHub page. I'll, I'll also post a, a, a link to that as well. <clears throat> some documentation that talks through various components about the cards and obviously the labels and the the, the, obviously the case and so on and how to use the device itself. So there you go. And I just want to say once again, thanks very much to Travis Smith. Great guy. Uh, I've really thoroughly enjoyed our collaboration and really look forward to doing further things. And obviously to the rest of you, thank you very much for watching and I'll look forward to speaking to you next time. Take care guys, all the best and as people say, long live retro.